good afternoon, or excuse me, good evening, everyone. Um, one of our viewers, and uh, welcome back to my channel, uh, Amanda with Sugar Bees, in case this is your first time here. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about um, apparel contracts or contracts in general, whether it be for embroidery, screen print, or um, a vinyl. Um, a customer, or excuse me, talk a little bit about contracts. I don't deal with contracts on a regular basis. I think that I I reserve those for large orders. Um, and what I consider to be a large order is an order of 12 uh, garments or more, or 12 decals or more. Um, it's just, it all depends on the size of the order. Um, if there's a lot of money at stake, yes, definitely I would say play, uh, put a contract in place. Um, if they're going to be a repetitive customer, put a contract in place just so you both know where you stand. So you have it in writing. Uh, both of you have signed it and you're in agreement with all the terms. Um, I've only um, done a couple. Um, the rest are, I use a what's called a contractor's invoice. Um, and you can pick these up at um, Office Depot, Office Max. I'm not positive if the department stores have them but I picked these up at Office Max and I do believe I got over a hundred of them for like 20 bucks or something um, and they are three parts uh, carbonless customer the top copy um, excuse me usually I give them the yellow copy and I retain the pink and white for myself um, but what I put on here is customers pertinent information, their contact information, um, the due date, um, the date, and then all the pertinent um, information, and, like details about uh, what we're uh, doing um, as far as designs, colors, whether it's embroidery or vinyl, screen print. Um, I, I write it out in detail. Um, and I do put my prices on here. This is my hard copy before um, I put it in the computer because I don't always have a lot of time to sit down and type up an invoice while they're here. So um, it's basically my worksheet, I work all that up on. Um, and then there is a space down at the bottom for them to sign and tells me they're in agreement to every bit of information we've placed on here. Um, and there's also, um, a place for deposit information. Uh, if you don't already get a 50% deposit upfront, I highly suggest that. Um, and I will give you a, a, a tip on that. Uh, whether I allow customers to bring me garments, um, as long as I know uh, if I'm familiar, as long as I'm familiar with the brand. Um, and what I mean with I'm familiar by the brand, I know what it's going to do if I put it on the heat press or on the board machine. Um, um, but customers have kind of battled with me on that from time to time. Well, I brought you my garments. Obviously, I'm going to come back and get them. That's not always the case. I've had customers drop shirts off and not come back and get them. People don't care. I mean, and then, you know, obviously, I'm always fearful at some point, whether it be a year or two years later. Um, they're going to come back and get those shirts. So I, I can't do anything with them. They're just taking up space. Um, so it's not like I can do anything with those. So always, no matter if they bring you their garments or not, get a 50% deposit down. Um, I take checks, but I only take checks from businesses. Businesses have a lot more to lose than an individual does if the check bounces. Um, but... Just for, um, like I said, for smaller orders, I use these. Um, like I said, they're called a contractor's invoice. Pick them up at Office Max. Um, now, when it comes to um, written contracts, um, it's the standard terms and conditions of services uh, for a personal print order, five plus items, or actually 10 plus items. Um, and just to give you an example, I'm just using one. Um, that um, that I did recently, or she's one of my was one of my ongoing customers, and that that's another scenario here. So you have this contract in place. 
um, and both of you signed off on it in agreement to the terms. Well, this particular customer here, um, for quite some time, she abided by this contract. Um, and then, oh, you're welcome, Kim. And feel free to ask questions, Kim. I know this is for you. Feel free to jump in and ask any questions. Um, but this particular customer, she upheld this contract for a good long while. Um, she was my customer for uh, about two years. Um, but then she started getting um, a little slack um, to where she was kind of pushing the envelope a little bit and not abiding by all of the guidelines set in place. So we had a um, a heart to heart. And at that point, I believed everything was okay. We were going to proceed and follow the guidelines of our contract. Well, as time went on, and this was probably two, three months later, it started back again. Now, I gave you once, um, but the second time, okay, this is the last straw. It's basically what I told her. Um, just to tell you what was going on briefly, I'm not going to mention any names. Um, she had, she did manufacture them herself, herself. She had costumes manufactured um, in Colombia. So, in my opinion, she didn't pre-plan a lot as far as I need to get my them to manufacture my order by this date so I can have them by this date because she had paid for events that she was going to. So, in turn, every time, probably the last nine to six months of our um, working relationship, those um, shipments were being held up in customs. For one reason or another, they were being held up. So, by the time they made it to me for me to do the embroidery work on them, I wasn't being allowed to have ample time to complete her order. We had allotted five business days and I told her as time progresses and your orders get larger, I'm going to need more time. Um, so she disrespected me on, on that. She didn't, she didn't follow. Um, and when she dropped, she was supposed to pay 50%. Well, it was always, and we had, a, I thought a trusting relationship where I felt comfortable and she, she, she did this for some time of where, um, oh, I forgot my credit card. Can I pay you when I get home? I, I believe I left it at home or it's in another vehicle. Okay. And she, she followed through when she got home quite a few times. But towards the end, when she was getting a little bit too familiar and too comfortable with me, she stopped doing that. And I wasn't okay with that because I felt like, I was being shafted. I, I just, I wasn't comfortable with it. I don't allow anybody to do that. And she was not an exception. Um, or she would want to come pick some garment. Or she would want to rush me on say a handful of garments. She would want to rush me on those because oh, I've got a photo shoot. So can we get these done right away? And she would give me like two, three days time. Um, instead of the five days. So, we got to the point where she just was not adhering to the contract. So I said, okay. Um, and by the way, she was very arrogant and she offended me a few times. Um, so she was already on my list. She was already on my radar. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, we're getting to the point where we're not friends anymore. Um, but the last order, I ended up with maybe I was going to have two days to do 150 garments. So, so I, I took the order in, but after she left, of course she called back with more demands after she left. So I told her, I, said, I cannot do this anymore. So I sit down and I responded to her with a formal email telling her, um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to complete your order. I will not be completing any of your orders anymore. You have not upheld our contract. 
And I even went as far as to find other embroiderers in the area that were ready to take her order so she would not miss a beat and I did not leave her hanging. Um, and at that point, we're two days, two, three days in, still haven't got my deposit again. And um, she was still wanting me to go through boxes and pull this one out and this one out and this one out and get those ready in a hurry. And I, I just had enough. Um, so... Yes, do a contract for somebody like this. Yes, if she's a returning customer and it's a large order, yes, by all means, do uh, a written contract. Um, this will uphold just as well, just as well. This, you know, this could be your reference to go back to and say, no, you signed off on this. You agreed to this. If they didn't read over it before they signed it, whose problem is that? It's not yours. It's not yours. You wrote everything down during your conversation with them, during your consultation with them. If they didn't bother to read it, um, even after I verbally go over it, just in case you didn't comprehend what I was saying, if you didn't bother to read that before you signed off on it, it's your loss. It's your loss. There are no refunds. Uh, that is another one of my policies. I do not offer refunds. I may give you a credit or a replacement, but I am not giving you a refund because I, that's supplies wasted it's labor wasted no um but i firmly believe in a contract whether one or the other um it's just um what's a better way to explain this um it, it, it will just give you back it gives you back up in case anything goes awry you had it in writing you had it in writing um, but Kim, do you have any questions, love? Um, in another part of your contract, which is highly, 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 highly recommend this. Um, this is called a customer garment waiver. This is for um, customers who provide their own garments, who bring their own garments to you. Um, basically, just, uh, well, I'll read it to you. While Sugar Bees cares for your garments and your patronage, please understand that occasionally during embroidery or heat transfer process, a garment can be damaged by a computer-driven sewing machine or the heat press. All precautions are taken to avoid any incidents from time to time. This is beyond our control. Unfortunately, it is not always possible to replace these items. In these situations, your garments will be returned with our deepest apologies with a refund for your paid service. Now, this is where the refund comes into play. I don't give it any other time. Um, problems do not arise often, but the customer must be aware and agree to the possibility. Now, I'm going to do everything I can to provide them with the replacement, with a refund being the last resort. Um, but that's just to let them know that, that some items aren't always easy to find. If it's something that's very sentimental to them, um, a family heirloom, uh, heirloom um, just something that's really personal to them, then I won't even touch it at all. I don't know. It's too much risk involved. I, I just leave it alone. But uh, yes, to answer your question, Kim, I, I do believe in contracts. If you need a copy of the one I have, it's pretty detailed. Um, just to outline a few things that we talked about within this contract, um, we put our pricing in there. Um, and I do offer a price break at 50 items. So if the items, just as an example on this one, if it was one through 50 items, though there were $2 per item. Um, at 51, the price breaks to a dollar. Um, and you decide what percentage you want that price break to be. Um, uh, deposit balance, form of payments, and credit terms. We don't offer any credit. Um, form of payments, we accept credit card, business check, and cash. Um, I tried bank transfers before, and it took weeks to get my money. Um, deposit, it's always 50% up front. And the balance is due upon delivery. Um, I always um, well this was for her initial order um, but we would always discuss a date when she was going to drop off 
Um, and from that date of drop, I had five business days to complete those terms. And please, um, did I ever have someone that didn't want to sign a contract? At this point, no, I did not, Kim. I have not. Um, and if they did not want to sign a contract, then we can't do business together. Uh, because, like I said, this keeps us both honest. So by them not signing the contract, I don't feel like they're being honest with me. I, I'm, I'd say I, I give people the benefit of the doubt, but I'm really not, I'm not a trusted person. I'm not. Um, and just a few more things we talk about in here, um, like what, she had a logo. So we I outlined where the placement was, um, that she was providing garments, um, her artwork in regards to digitizing, um, my business hours, my communication hours, um, cancellation and changes to the order, um, acceptance of the order, um, which means I inspected everything prior to even beginning, uh, starting, um, and took photos if any damaged garments that came to me. Um, I did not touch those. If there was any type of damage, they never touched my machine. Um, because I didn't want to be held responsible for them. Like I said, I immediately took pictures and sent them to her. Um, and sales tax exemption. Um, usually, companies are exempt, um, and I make them provide me with a tax exemption certificate from whatever state they uh, it was issued from. Um, but no, I never had anyone that did not want to sign a contract. What is your main focus, Kim? What are, what type of um, business are you doing right now? Are you doing heat transfer? Are you doing um, embroidery? Tell me what about, tell me what you're doing. And that's, this thing is the devil. I've been working on this for hours now. Just trying to finish this little design right here. Embroidery and sewing. Okay. okay. It's a very lucrative business. I don't have a lot of people competing against me as far as the embroidery. Unfortunately, since everybody can easily go by uh, a cameo or a cricket, I have a lot of competition with that. How long have you been in business, Kim? How long have you been doing this? about a year. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm listening while I'm reading while I work. I just want this thing out of my face. Now, where are you located, Kim? If you don't mind me asking, you don't have to answer that if you don't feel comfortable with it. Okay. So what has happened, Kim, to make you inquire about the contract? Southern New Jersey. Never been there. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I don't remember a time, Kim, when I never took a deposit. I'm trying to think. 
when I managed the boutique, we made them pay everything up front. Um, but that was one of those things I decided to do when I first started out, when I ventured out on my own, I said, I've got to take a deposit because my thing was, I don't have a lot of working capital capital. So if I needed to buy supplies for that order, um, then I was having to put my working capital out to, to pay for supplies. And I, you know, I really couldn't afford to do that. So that was another reason. And then, you know, they do ask, you know, well, what are you going to do with this? Mm. I think these little contracts right here, Kim, will do you just as good. And I'll even give you a third option if you'll give me just a second. My leg's asleep, so bear with me. This is another option too, Kim, if you can see these. Um, these are just little invoices. Um, but you can get these at um, pretty much any place. Target, Walmart. Um, but just anything you can write out in detail um, while you're having your consultation um, and have them sign. Getting their signature is the most important part. You can just have them sign anywhere on here, but this allows you to put all the pertinent information down in writing and get their little autograph on it. Okay, so you have these info on. Have you tried selling on Facebook, Kim? That's the only place I advertise, aside from word of mouth. I've really got to get a new chair. I got a taller table, but I didn't get a taller chair. Um. I advertise on Facebook on the local pages. We have what's called um, online yard sale pages. That is my main source of advertisement. Um, I do have a, um, I advertise on Google Maps and that's free to you as well. Um, so if people are searching for, if they type embroidery services near me on Google, it will show, it will show you there. But I also um, have, um, and I'll give you the link right here. Uh, but it's um, a Facebook business page. Um, and I advertise everything there. And you can set up a, um, a shop on Facebook uh, business page. Um, it is a Spotify account. So it's like a separate app. But it merges with Facebook um, to where people can go shop for your um, items, but you can look around mine as well, just to give you an idea of what you can do. Well, good. At least it didn't go to, you know, it didn't go to waste. I, I buy a lot of remnant fabric. Um, well, I still buy the remnant fabric, but I was making crib size blankets. Um, not this past year, but the year before I made probably 20 of them. Um, and, um, I don't know that any of them sold. I ended up taking up my friend of mine, her mom owns a consignment store. I ended up taking them up there and selling them to her for a fraction of the cost of what I had in them, but they had sat around for almost a year. Um, I'm embarrassed to say, but I didn't lose all my money. I got some of it back, but at least you were able to uh, to get those to uh, 
to someone and make your money back. And I think I'm going to have to recut this again. I feel like I've wasted tons of vinyl tonight. We are making 4th of July tutu outfits. And this we have a little model. She's so cute. Um, we call her Sassy. And Sassy is going to have a matching tutu. Well, she already has a matching tutu with this. And this is going to have her monogram on the front of her shirt. And she has a huge bow to wear. She loves these huge bows. My kid never really got into the whole bow scene. So is there any more questions you have, Kim? So you know the only NFL favorite Okay. Are you wondering where you can get it somewhere else? I think I'm a little confused on that question, Cam. I Oh, toll bridge. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you shop on Etsy, there's a lot of fabric sellers on there. Um, Hobby Lobby doesn't care a lot. I carry a lot of um, NFL. Um, but probably your next best bet would be. Have you tried Amazon? Or eBay? I find eBay has, um, I like the fact they have individuals on there, um, like selling off their overstock. But I would try Etsy, I would try Amazon, I would try eBay. Let's see if we can. Amazon, yeah, definitely Amazon. Well, okay, Kim Love, if you have any more questions, just shoot me a message and I'll try to be as quick as I can about answer it, um, either responding or doing an email. Okay. Okay. Heat transfer. All right. Heat transfer vinyl or transfers? Okay. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Because when you say, <laughs> kind of throws me off a little bit when you said she sold you her file. Usually they're SVG files. Okay. This is a printed transfer. And then you have vinyl that you cut. 
It's a picture. Okay. Okay. So we've got a picture. No, a printed transfer. Okay. Okay, so what's your question, Kim? Uh, you would need, um, well, you could do either or. Um, if you have an inkjet printer, they make transfers for lights and dark garments um, that you can print with your um, your home inkjet printer. If you don't have that available to you, then you're going to need to um, have a printed transfers made. Um, and I get mine from, um, if I have a large order, if it's just one or two, I print them myself. Um, but if you have um, 25 or more, then um, I would highly suggest Transfer Express. Um, and this is a higher quality than what you're going to get with that inkjet transfer. The inkjet transfer um, is not going to be as vibrant in color and it's not going to be as glossy. Um, that's why I recommend those. But, and it's if it's full color, I would definitely try Transfer Express. It, it's very simple to go through. Um, let me see if I can pull up their order form here. Um, let's see here. We would, um, if you want to email your, the artwork to me, Kim, I can, uh, I can get you a quote on it if that would be easier. Yeah, that would be best, Kim. Um, here, I'll give you my email address here, and I'm not shy about giving it. Um, but if you send it to me, I can tell you. It's hard to say without looking at it. Whether What's the best route to go? So there is my email. And then I'll let you send that to me and I'll look at it. I won't be able to look at it um, while we're online. Um, but I can uh, message you back. Okay. All right, Miss Kim, I'm going to hop off here. I've got to get back and finish up these shirts. We're trying to get um, 4th of July tutu outfits ready, um, or at least our sample, before we miss our window to make them for next week. So send me your file, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I'll leave my computer sitting right here so I can respond to you fairly quickly. All right?
All right. Well, thank you for dropping by and we will talk soon. You're welcome. Bye-bye.